Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Wednesday Walkabout. And I am thrilled to be able to do this and report to you that we got no damage, only a really good soaking rain from the front that came through. Now, I'm sad, sad to report that that is not true for everywhere in Oklahoma, and certainly our thoughts go out to those of you in other areas that really experienced some, some damage from all of the high wind and maybe even a little tornadic um, activity. But isn't, isn't this just a lovely way to start a day is to come out to the garden. And I have Yesterday I came out, and, and by the way, along with that gentle soaking rain that came through, what also came through was a pretty aggressive cold front. So while temperatures didn't get anywhere near freezing, it has cooled out, cooled off quite a bit, and it is really chilly out here this morning. Which is not bad for the garden. Actually, it's quite good for the garden. And instead of making things grow at exponential speed, it will put out a lot of top growth, but it's also putting out lots of that very necessary underground growth and activity. Those roots are very, very happy. And more happy tulip shadows. You know, I'd love the shadows of the railings and I love shadows in general, but this is the first time I've ever had such beautiful, beautiful shadow play with the tulips because they, they ultimately, after starting out so short, they grew up to be quite tall. And even on this windy hill, they don't seem to be suffering. I mean, after the rain, they they are pouting and a little bit sulking but nevertheless with this sun this morning they're standing up and flying right and boy i am definitely planting this blend again and look at these double tulips a number of these are just now coming out i can't believe the duration of bloom for my tulips this year I spotted these yesterday, you guys, and I, I am just beyond thrilled because now is a great time to go out and look and see if you identify any seedlings that you might recognize. Like right here, there's, there's a lot of larkspur, and I'm happy to see it, but I'm not that overwhelmed because I have a lot of it. But what I discovered yesterday, and let me see if I can locate it because it's tiny right now. And I can't believe that I spied it and that it looks like there are a number of little clumps. It's easier to see from the other side, from the other angle. But I spied some germination of some basil. Now I can't believe it but some of that boxwood basil, I think, went to seed. See, there's another one right there. And even though it's cool, and how do I know that that's a boxwood basil seed? Well, look there, and I recognize that unique form of those two leaves and how they've germinated. And if some of these have come back, look at, I see a number this makes me so happy. I see a number of boxwood seedlings. So if this grows up into those beautiful mounds that I had last year, oh my goodness, what a happy surprise. And 
speaking of going to seed, a lot of this East Friesland salvia, which I've talked about ad nauseum, has also gone to seed. And a lot of it I will be moving around because again, if something performs, plant more of it. And boy, did this perform all throughout the season. And look how beautifully it companions with that sunshine ligustrum. So if I keep it deadheaded, you guys, it will just keep pumping out these abundant purple spires that right now look beautiful with the tulips, but later will also coordinate. And I think it's just a, a great color that coordinates with almost everything. It will look beautiful with the coneflower, with the roses, with pretty much everything that it grows next to it it is just a perfect player in the garden and i'm going to be doing a list of some of my my most prized most um, imperative perennials to grow in the garden All that rain was simply miraculous, especially since we didn't get any destruction or flooding or anything of that nature or even high winds really. And this morning, this is this is what I dreamed of, you guys, when I had these raised beds built back here and it's just coming out here without even having to bend over and see what's going on. All of these little seedlings germinating. So in here, I've got radishes. I actually also planted some calendula. And you can see there, there is a nasturtium. I need to remove and reorient these cloches before it starts growing through the little partitions, the little wire partitions too aggressively, or I won't be able to move it later. But lots and lots of germination going on. And thankfully, I did put these on because squirrels have been rampant around the backyard. And interestingly, when I first moved in, they weren't a problem much at all. But now, of course, I think they have followed me here. So that's, that's kind of um, a vexing thing. In box number two, there is lots of activity, and today I am, for the first time, going to be harvesting from it. So I don't maybe have enough greens to completely make a salad, but I can definitely do some pinching, a little fresh daily harvest from the chard, from the cabbage, and from the lettuces in box number one. And then, of course, there's lots of other little baby lettuces that are starting to grow. And with this rain and with some heat, it will really be productive, I think. And then here, any time now, those nasturtiums in this box will begin to put on enough size and enough height so that I can start getting them to cascade over the edge, as is my vision. Now this weekend, make sure to tune in because I'm gonna be doing lots of pruning on the olive trees. They look very, very overgrown and kind of lanky, and I want them to start getting more structure to them, and I also want the trunks and the branches to start thickening up and looking more mature. Look at how many flowers are on this one. Unbelievable. So I, oh, I've got a bay tree down over there from the storm, so I need to rectify that. At any rate, I will be pruning on these, and if you want a pruning tutorial, then by all means, you'll want to join us. Now let's check out box number one. And I have identified that I need one more stepping stone over here, which is an easy remedy. And this gorgeous romaine lettuce, this is also 
what I will be harvesting from. Just the outside leaves, it's kind of a cut and come again thing. It's loving this cooler weather and it will continue to be productive. And then all of my favorite green, the arugula in there, those little darlings. They are really gonna, they are really gonna do their thing here for too long. Um, but in the meantime, since I got the starts of the romaine, I can harvest from it. I'm really loving the textural contrast of the boxwood with the oxalis and the pansies. I really need to do lots of deadheading on the pansies. Now, some of you asked, is it necessary to deadhead them, the pansies and the violas? And no, it's not absolutely necessary, but it definitely keeps the stand looking more fresh, more vibrant, and it does keep it pumping out new and fresh blooms, which is really what I want it to do because I want it to look very profuse and very abundant throughout the spring because before too long, I'm gonna say in another month or so, I'm gonna be pulling these out. And so obviously I want them to put on quite the show while they are here. I'm actually going to leave some of those pansies, I think. Um, I, need to, I need to decide what to do with them. Some of them that I may keep in the, uh, may plant in the ground or whatever, because some seedlings, they go to seed fairly easily, and that might be nice to see if I could get some of them to come back. Not only are these tulips absolutely brilliant in their color and their performance, but look, look at those fun shadows that they are making on the window box. And then with the movement of the Lamandra, I just, I really, really am pleased with this whole area. And yes, we will be showing you the entirety of this space, but I need Stuart here to really give you a good feel for the complete reveal of the backyard. And this morning, I just wanted to do this walkabout and show you what I see when I come out here, but I will definitely be planting more of these. As I said, I will check to see what this variety is. And there's my tip for today. If you have good performance from one blend, one variety or another, then now is the time to record it and in some cases even order them for next year. So I will be doing that with color blends. Once I finish my assessment of the performance of the different blends and the different tulips, I'll go ahead and order them and they won't ship me or bill me until it's planting time. But this way I will be confident that they will not sell out and they will be available for me next fall. Well, could the foliage on the Japanese maple be any more beautiful? And after that rain, it is really going to take off. And I will be doing some pruning on this as well. Now, it might look congested in this area over here by the sideboard table but I'll be able to rectify that by pruning it up. And as it matures over time, you'll be able to walk under it and there really won't be any obstruction at all with any of the items, the tables, the planters, the railing that I have here. It will grow up enough and I will raise the canopy on it so that it won't be a problem. But it will be it already is, but it will be even more beautiful over time.
and I am just really, really loving the way all of the better boxwood, in this case, twilight or skylight, looks growing in these pots, and just the glossiness of the foliage is just really, really lovely. And speaking of shadow play, look at the shadows that that Japanese maple makes on the porch and on the planter box. Some of the old heavenly bamboo, bamboo domestica, that was growing here already in the backyard. I, Some of it I put in the ground, but some of it I just plopped into one of these great big faux terracotta pots that I painted. And this is looking very woody, very straggly. And what I will do in short order is get out my my works battery operated pruners and I will prune it all the way back. You can see it's putting out new growth, but I want that growth to be at the bottom. And and Nandina is one of the few plants that you can prune all the way back to the ground practically and almost at any time of year and depending on the weather conditions it will reward you with new foliage, new growth at the spot of the cut. So I'm going to be doing that with this because it's alive, but it is not really reaching its potential in terms of beauty and attractiveness in the garden. So I need to intervene and do a little something to improve its appearance. And look at these beautiful hellebores. Now this is a pretty view if I do say so myself. And whenever you are working in your garden, it's always valuable to, no matter where you're standing, even if it's in an area where you wouldn't normally be or where your guests would normally be, I think it's important to look at the garden from that vantage point to see what views are really spectacular, if for no other reason than planning and beautiful photographs. So I love the shadows here, I love the arching of the tulips, I love the color echoes, and mostly I just love all of that lush green from the evergreens, the topiaries, the round balls. It makes me happy. I am so, so thrilled with the way the Bronze Beauty Ajuga, very common, but how it is spreading rather aggressively, which is exactly what I want it to do, to fill in the gaps in between all of these mounds. And someone was asking me, I believe, for my inspiration picture again, and I, I think I can locate it. And if so, I'll try to put it in this video. But it's really doing well, which is why I just planted more of it. If something works well for you, then by all means, continue that formula. And so I have. Now you can't see it from here, but I also spied, as I was practically on my hands and knees, knees yesterday looking for just these things, I spied, I believe, some Xenia seedlings. And some of it that I left to go to seed I think did indeed go to seed and germinate. And I can't remember exactly where it is, but rest assured, I saw a couple and I'm hoping that I see even more of it scattered throughout this area on the hill along Autumn's edge. And look how beautifully those plants are performing, that fire chief an orange rocket. Let's just take a moment to be quiet and listen, listen to these, these happy birdies.
This is a surprise player over here on the east side because I really don't remember planting any foxglove. But here's a small one and it's already beginning to set bud. And boy, that that penstemon, that purple foliage is beautiful and I might even do some pinching back on this. And I'll demonstrate that again once I have another set of hands here. Look at the size of that allium. And I was reading something, or I can't remember where I saw it. It may have been on Instagram. It may have been in a magazine. But planting allium in conjunction with Encore azaleas. And the Encore azaleas then fill out and hide all the dying foliage because definitely alliums are one that you want to allow the foliage to mature. Look at that big fat bud there. And I've got these scattered throughout the garden and they will really lend a Dr. Seussish quality to everything here. Here is all the foxglove on the west side, and boy, it is really starting to shoot up stems with big blooms on them. And they go all the way from this point leading towards the street. They should be beautiful when they're all in bloom. And you can see from here those projecting buds from the It's a Breeze Rose. That has turned out to be far more spectacular than I anticipated, and I can't wait for the companion on the other side to grow up as well. And before too long, it will catch up. I, have, I am very confident, and that will give some much needed height. Height, height, what do you say? and visual weight to the other side. Those right there are more alliums, a different variety, but more alliums. And lots of salvia over here that will be repositioned and I'll be showing you where I will be transplanting a lot of it sweet little Amsonia shrub right there with white blooms on it. Right before the rain, I came out and I planted all of the bulbs that I had in the Easter baskets. All of the muscari and the hyacinths and I planted all of those along Lemon Lane and in the flower bed in front of the front porch. Now this is what I mean about that salvia going to seed. Some of it went to seed in this pot here <laughs> and it just is very happy there. I may need to separate it from its mother boxwood. And a little bit late because of that hard, hard freeze, but the azaleas are starting to bloom. And the cuttings from them, I really, I have been enjoying them in cut flower arrangements, even without the flowers. I just love the stems and the growth pattern of the leaves and the woodiness of the stems. This whole bank of white wedding hydrangeas will explode before too long, but I really don't, I don't want to hurry anything up because I want to savor the moment. That lemon lime nandina is just, it is really breathtaking. And it lends such delicacy to the design. 
along with a golden fever for you. Line, shape, and form, and texture, and pattern, and repetition, those are the things that really make me swoon and what creates a beautiful garden. Here's another seedling that I recognize that I didn't really have a lot of last year, but boy, this year it has germinated, and that is Verbena bonariensis, and some people love it, and some people do not because it does go to seed pretty aggressively. But in this smaller front yard, I can edit out what I want and keep the remains. Let me see if I can spy those boxwood seedlings from this vantage point. Ah, yes, there they are. Well, thanks guys for hanging out with me and doing this walkabout. It's beautiful this morning. It's cool. There's no wind. There's not much damage from the storm. I have lots of deadheading to do, but that is very, very happy work. Things are truly about to explode. So I will see you this weekend when we will do the full reveal of the back. And right now you just got, you just go out in your own gardens and enjoy just how beautiful spring can be. See you all this weekend.